I'm Cliff Hignett. I'm the consultant for Soil Water Solutions and the manufacturer and marketer of a range of soil physics equipment, including the infiltrometer rings, which we are about to talk about right here on this videotape. Now, this is the set of e the full set of equipment made by Soil Water Solutions. Uh, there are four different diameters of rings, uh, ranging from 50 centimetres diameter to 30 centimetres diameter. The white uh, sticks you can see in the foreground are oblique rulers. Each of these has a bubble on it which is set so that when the bubble is centred the ruler is at a slope of 1 in 10. That means that uh, if you've got them dipped into water at the time at the right slope then the uh, surface of the water moves down the ruler 1 centimetre for every 1 millimetre of water infiltration. On the right the tanks are Marriott bottles. They are a water reservoir which releases water to maintain water at a particular height in the ring. Now there's two methods of measuring infiltration rate, at least using rings. Uh, one of them is the fixed head method and for that you need a Marriott bottle. For the falling head method you use the oblique rulers which are the little sticks in the foreground. Soil water infiltration is usually measured so that uh, either the rate of entry of water into the soil from a ponded uh, source like a lake or a river is measured or it is to partition the amount of rainfall that might enter the soil during a rainstorm. Uh, if you know a certain amount is going to infiltrate then you can assume that the rest of it will run off assuming the soil is on something of a slope. So what we're trying to work out is how much water from a pond is going to flow into the soil and how fast is it going to flow into it. Now to do that we need an undisturbed soil surface. So, so we put a cloth across the soil surface to prevent disturbance when we add water. That isn't quite accurate because the rain is going to disturb the surface and may substantially alter the infiltration rate but usually that's ignored in infiltration tests so we'll ignore it too. Now there are two basic methods of measuring it. One is what's called the single ring method. This is where you place a ring, you embed a ring, a metal ring into the soil and you put water in it and you measure the rate water flows from the ring into the soil. So that involves measuring a falling head of water. Now we use a device called an oblique ruler to measure that falling head. An alternative method, also with a single ring, is to set up a device that maintains a constant head of water in the ring and then measures the amount of water required to maintain that constant head. That's obviously called the constant head method. Now that's the single ring method. The method preferred for accuracy is the double ring method. Now the double ring method involves having a guard ring around the outside of the ring where the infiltration is being measured and the reason for this is that water will flow, some water will flow sideways out from the ring. And very small rings, like a 10 centimetre diameter ring, this error will be quite substantial. It can be 100% of the infiltration value. But as the ring gets bigger, the amount of water flowing sideways becomes a smaller and smaller percentage of the amount of water infiltrating. And therefore this error represented by this sideways flowing water becomes a smaller and smaller error. Now as a consultant of some 40 years experience I've used both methods and my view is that unless there is some special reason to use a double ring infiltrometer I would not recommend it. The reason is that it is extremely difficult to tell if there is water leaking from the centre ring to the outer ring and in the field condition, in under field conditions, water will leak. Uh, every now and again you'll get, a, even in a single ring method, you'll get water flowing out of the ring at some unexpected point. It may have picked up a rock if you hammered it into the ground and that's made a channel and the water flows out. The difference between the two methods is that with the single ring method these leaks are obvious, you can pick them up, discard the data and do the thing again. With a double ring, if that leak is occurring in the centre ring, you cannot uh, detect it except by noting that the two water levels are exactly the same. So it is prone to faults and unless there's some very real reason why the double ring should be used I don't recommend it. Water Solutions sells this range of equipment 
not normally as a whole unit, although of course we're willing to, but normally we will sell it a, a, a part of this equipment to do double ring infiltrometer tests with a falling head, or we might sell a different set to do single ring tests with a fixed head or single ring tests with a falling head. You might want to do several tests simultaneously, so you might want several rings, and we make those rings so that they fit inside one another for easy transport. The actual diameter of the ring uh, only affects the error on the test. If you do a small number of large tests, you'll get about the same error as if you do a very large number of small tests, and the smaller the test is, the bigger the error is going to be and you'll need more and more tests. So I'm recommending you use large rings, and much larger than 50 centimetres means that they're very, very hard to transport. So my rings go from 30 centimetres diameter up to 50 centimetres diameter, and a set of four of those installed in a field used as single ring infiltrometers will generally produce the same answer as a mean as if you did that again and again and again. It is very rare that more than four tests are needed although you might like to check that in your particular field. OK, now what are we going to do? We, we can, first of all, I think I'll demonstrate the single ring method with an oblique ruler, which is the easiest, fastest, and the method that after 30 years' experience in the field, it's the method I would recommend. It is reasonably not prone to error, and it produces answers fairly quickly and with a minimum amount of work. It could also easily be run by one person. Now I'm going to demonstrate first of all uh, the method using a single ring and an oblique ruler. Well, the method to put these in, the best way is to stand on the ring to stop it moving. It stops it rocking while you tap in with a heavy object like this crowbar or a, uh, a sledgehammer, the head of a sledgehammer with a head down the bottom, just tap it in. Or a piece of water pipe does the job very nicely. Once it's in, check that it's nice and firm. And as soon as you start the test, just check around the outside for any water leaks. Step is to put a piece of cloth in. We have a, a grass surface here, so soil disturbance isn't an issue but it's a good idea to set the principles the same every time. And we get an appropriate sloping ruler and set, set it so that the bubble is at the right height. We'll have a look at that in close up. Now the process of setting the level to get the ruler exactly a 1 in 10 slope is fairly easy. Just lower the ruler into the right position so the bubble is centred and fold the wire over the top of the ring. That roller is now set at a 1 in 10 slope. In a minute. And then we add the water. We start the stopwatch and add the water. Watch it started. Here comes the water. And now you can see the water moving down the roller slowly as it infiltrates. It's fairly easy to measure the point at which the water cuts the roller. And so any one centimetre of movement on that is equivalent to one millimetre of water infiltration into the soil. OK, now that was the single ring falling head method. Let's try it, uh, the same test again, single ring, but with a Marriott bottle instead. Now these are the Marriott bottles, as I've already said. The height, we need to put some water in it. OK, now the bottle's full. We put in our depth measuring device. I'll show you how that works in a minute. Now, with this method, because the Marriott bottle doesn't hold enough water to do the whole ring, 
it's important to start off with a bit of water in the ring. piece of wood will hold it in position and now that bottle will maintain the water level in the ring once it comes into equilibrium which it will in a minute um, and it'll hold the water level at that point as soon as this starts to move we'll start the stopwatch and we'll be measuring the uh, amount of water flowing out of this uh, Marriott bottle Marriott bottle is now working you can hear the air bubbling into it and see the water level dropping in the tube which of course is what you measure against your stopwatch conversion of that water level drop into volume is a matter of multiplying by the internal area of the Marriott bottle the Marriott bottle maintains its water level as a small hole a centimetre from the end of the transparent tube and it maintains the water level at that level until it runs out of water Okay, so that's the single ring method done with both a falling head and a fixed head. You should end up with the same answer from both methods. But both methods, both of those methods do have a disadvantage. Now in my view, as I said before, I don't think that disadvantage is great when you use a large diameter ring. The disadvantage is that some of that water will not be going straight down below the ring. It will be spreading out sideways around the ring. And that will be depend on the soil type, its, uh, its porosity, and its sorptivity. Uh, it would be necessary, or one way to measure the amount flowing out sideways around the ring, is to use a series of different diameter rings ranging from something quite small, like a 10 centimetre diameter ring, up to one of these rings such as I'm using. And looking at the infiltration rate measured by each of those, you should be able to work out what percentage of each size ring is flowing sideways. However, that is a long and involved procedure. The recommended method for um, environmental impacts and so forth is to use a double ring method. But as I said, I believe that method is so error prone in the field that it is best to avoid it. However, the soil water solution system allows you to do that if you buy a, a couple of pro appropriately sized rings. So we'll demonstrate the double ring method. Well, we've still got our ring here. It's got some nice wet soil in it now. Let's take our cloth out and we need another ring in the centre. Installed exactly the same way as the previous one. Now this time the ring that we just used is going to become the guard ring and the actual measurement is going to be done on the centre ring. Now we have to manage to put this ring in so we guarantee no leaks, which is very, very difficult in practice. test I guess is to see if it's nice and firmly in the soil which it is so we'll hope it's not leaking now we have water around the outside what we're going to do now is measure the amount of water flowing through down through the inside ring and we can do that with either a sloping ruler or with a Marriott bottle it's a bit easier with a Marriott bottle because it's a small ring for a sloping ruler however one of the rulers is supplied that size so Oops. Another little cork here that used to fill it up. And when that reaches height, we will be ready to measure the infiltration rate again on the ruler on the side of the bottle. Now this time, of course, this volume of water is flowing into that size ring, so the rate of flow of water into the soil will depend on the ratios of the two areas. 
and that's now reached height and we're actually measuring infiltration. So we set our stopwatch and watch how fast this water is dropping down. So that's the double ring method. There's still water in the outside here. You may have to put another water supply onto the outside. The ring system. If you have a need to measure infiltration in deeper layers of soil, you can use this method by backhoeing down to the layer and using these methods. Or you can use what's called a talisma or borehole permeometer, which is done by digging a five centimeter or more diameter hole in the soil down to the layer you're interested in. And then there is a device, this uh, pen, uh, infiltrometer we sell, is a device for maintaining a small water level depth, a fixed water level depth at the bottom of that hole. Works like the fixed head method through the bottom of the hole. However, there's another video describing that. We also do more sophisticated infiltrometer devices such as the uh, disc permeometer method where water is allowed to infiltrate uh, at a slight suction which means that if you have large holes in the soil, for example, you wish to do an infiltration in a soil which has spider holes every 10 centimetres, then perhaps, and you're not interested in the water that flows down the spider holes, which you may be, but if you're not and you want to find out how much water flows into the soil matrix itself, then you need a disc permeometer. And Soil Water Solutions also makes a disc permeometer. You can ask for the video for that also.